Hey guys, it's Chris. From half-human, half-beast terrors to creations of the gods themselves, join me as I reveal nine of the scariest monsters in Greek mythology. Number 9. Griffin There are a few mythological creatures that combine many parts of real creatures we have today. One of the most common used in coat of arms in medieval history and partially to this day is that of the griffin, which was a beast said to have the head and wings of an eagle and the body, tail, and hind legs of a lion. The pairing of these creatures to form the griffin was meant to convey power. The eagle is the king of the skies, while the lion is the king of beasts. Thus, this fusion was no doubt meant to show off how dominant of a creature it was. For this reason, the griffin has had many different purposes in mythology. For example, in Greek mythology, the griffins were known to be the steeds that pulled the sun god Apollo's chariot across the sky. However, they were also considered one of the pets of Zeus, and not to be trifled with. Many other creatures had their own stories and tales about the griffin, including the Persians and the Chinese, among others. Number 8. The Chimera The Chimera is a term now commonly used to talk about creatures that have characteristics of other creatures mixed in. Not unlike how a platypus looks like a duck and a beaver, but also has a poison talon. In Greek mythology, the Chimera had the front of a lion, the body and protruding head of a goat, and a snake for a tail. It was also able to breathe fire, and was said to have been made by the immortals. In this case, it was born from the monster known as Echidna. The Chimera was a very fearsome beast, and was mentioned many times in the Iliad, including being a terror to the city known as Lycia. To defeat the creature, the king of the city had the hero Bellerophon combat it, and at this warrior's side was the mighty beast known as the Pegasus. Bellerophon used the Pegasus' ability to fly to go above the Chimera, thus making its attacks useless. The hero finished the beast off with a spear with a tip of lead that intentionally melted when the creature used its fire breath. And now for number 7. But first, be sure to subscribe to World List if you haven't already, and let me know what your favorite mythological creature is in the comments below. Number 7. The Cyclops in the realms of Greek mythology, the Cyclops are technically some of the oldest living creatures, because they were said to have been born via the titan known as Gaia, which was the titan of the earth itself, as well as being sired by Uranus, who was later overthrown by the titan known as Coronus. Coronus imprisoned the Cyclops into the pits of Tartarus until Zeus himself slew his father and then released the three brothers. The Cyclops are known for their size and strength, which Zeus put to use by having them all make his legendary thunderbolts on Mount Olympus, and of course, their singular eye, which has played a part in many stories over over the years well beyond Greek mythology. In the Odyssey, the Cyclops known as Polyphemus was a huge obstacle on the journey of Odysseus. Polyphemus was as big as a barn, and when the troop of Greeks arrived, he rolled a boulder into the mouth of a cave and trapped them. Then he started eating them one by one. Desperate to save the rest of his men, Odysseus tricked the Cyclops with wine and got him drunk. Before he passed out, he asked what Odysseus' name was, to which he replied, nobody. Then they rammed a pole into his eye. When he yelled for help, the other Cyclops came, but when they asked whose fault it was, he could only say nobody's. Number 6. The Sphinx While the Sphinx may be known to the masses as a stone structure in Egypt, it's also one of the most terrifying creatures in all of Greek mythology. Egyptian mythology paints the Sphinx as a benevolent entity, one who speaks to show wisdom to those who approach. But as shown in the tale of Oedipus, the Sphinx was a merciless creature. And if you didn't solve the riddle of the Sphinx correctly, it would kill you as punishment. However, both mythologies agree that the Sphinx had the head of a human and a body of a lion, though the Greeks also showed at times the Sphinx to have the wings of an eagle. In the story of Oedipus, the Sphinx was terrorizing the city of Thebes and asked all who tried to enter it, what walks on four feet in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three at night? The answer was man, which Oedipus answered correctly, allowing him to live and continue his journey, which would lead him to being king because he solved the riddle. Number 5. The Curbdis and Cilia In the Odyssey, the hero known as Odysseus was to endure many terrors in order to make it home after the Trojan War. Most readers agree that two of the biggest terrors that he had to face were the chapters featuring the Curbdis and Cilia. During the journey, he had to pass down a very narrow strait of water. On one side was the Curbdis 
and on the other was the cilia, both of which could have wiped out his entire crew, and so they had to be very careful to not go too close to either side, else they perish. As for what they were, the myths vary on their appearance and intent. The Curbdis, for example, was originally a sea monster beneath the waters, but was later rationalized into being a whirlpool of massive size, one that could swallow any ship that got pulled into her maw. As for Cilia, it's said that the creature was once a beautiful water nymph that was poisoned into being a monster, one that had six heads and would pounce on any ship that would sail past her. Sure enough, in the Odyssey, the act of distracting her cost Odysseus six of his men, but they were able to sail through despite the losses. Number 4. Minotaur Despite it being a mythical creature that is technically lesser than many others, the idea of the Minotaur has continued far beyond the story from Greek mythology where it was born. The Minotaur itself is described as half man, half bull. Specifically, it has the body of a man, but the head and tail of a bull, which is an appropriate phrase since the birth of this creature was honestly unnatural. The sea god Poseidon didn't like what a certain king did and didn't do, and his wife paid the price for it, so to speak, and gave birth birth to the monster. Unfortunately for said king, the Minotaur went rabid as it grew up and started to kill his people in order to get nourishment. To combat it, the king ordered a man named Daedalus to make a place to hold the Minotaur. Thus the labyrinth was born, and young men and women that were taken as prisoner of war would be thrown into the labyrinth and the Minotaur stayed there until the legendary hero Theseus killed him. Despite those being the only stories mentioning him, modern mythology and tales have continued to use the idea of the Minotaur, including appearing in legendary series like the Chronicles of Narnia and more. Number 3. Medusa one of the most legendary figures in all of mythology, Medusa is a being known as a Gorgon, who can be described as being with a womanly shape, but with wings and with snakes protruding out of her head as hair. She was also believed to be beautiful at one time, but was seduced by Poseidon and then punished by Athena. Her most legendary feat was that any who looked upon her were turned instantly into stone, which made her nearly impossible to kill. That is, until the hero Perseus went and fought her, on orders by King Polydecti of Seraphis, the gods assisted Perseus, and using a reflection via golden shield offered to him by Athena, he was able to slice off her head without looking directly into her eyes. What's more, he kept the head and killed the king as retribution for his own past crimes. Since that story, Medusa has been part of many stories and legends over the years, and has been adapted into many TV shows and films. Number 2. Cerberus the Underworld is a place that is often mentioned in Greek mythology, not the least of which was because of it being the Kingdom of Hades, who was the god of the dead. But more than a mythical and metaphorical place, it was one that was visited many times by those who were still alive. So to safeguard this place from the living and the dead wanting to escape, Hades put a three-headed dog in front of its gates. This dog was known as Cerberus. While employed by Hades to guard the gates of the underworld, the creature was one born of Echidna and Typhon, two other legendary monsters of Greek lore. And while more modern interpretations picture Cerberus as simply being a massive three-headed dog, in Greek mythology it is depicted as that, but with a snake for a tail, and other snakes protruding out of random parts of its body. One of the most famous tales featuring Cerberus is in the Twelve Labors of Hercules, where for one of the labors, Hercules had to not only fight the creature, but capture it and bring it to the surface to prove his feat. This was deemed an impossible task, but Hercules did it. Number 1. Hydra According to Greek mythology, the Hydra was one of the deadliest creatures on the face of the earth. It was said to be the son of Typhon and Echidna, and dwelled in the Lake of Lerna in the Argolid which is one of the regional units of Greece. The creature was so powerful that its very smell could kill people, and it had venomous breath, making it a lethal creature in various ways that few could overcome. But one of the details that has persisted throughout history is that the Hydra was a multi-headed beast. However, how many heads it actually had was never truly agreed upon, and this actually led to an extension of the legend, as the Hydra was soon able to grow two heads for every single one that a person would cut off, a notion that would later be visualized in modern media. Another Another Greek legend noted that the mighty hero Heracles, known in the West as Hercules, was charged by his father Zeus to kill the Hydra as one of his twelve labors. But even to Hercules, the monster was incredibly tough. 
he had to get help from his cousin Iolos in order to not be beat by the creature, but to burn its neck so no more heads could be grown. And the tactic worked, and the Hydra was defeated as a result. In the Disney interpretation of the story from Hercules, the battle with the Hydra was one of the climactic moments of the film, including a shot of the Hydra essentially having hundreds of heads, thus showing how truly monstrous the creature was. Well, thanks for watching. What did you think of these scary beasts from Greek lore? Which of these on the list did you find the scariest, or maybe the least scary? Do you know any other monsters that could have been on this list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on World List.